Clifton, it's a pleasure to meet you and congratulations for a shot through the wall. Thank you, Gig. Thank you very much. It, it, is, a, it is a terrific movie that sends a, a pretty good message. So I completely understand if, why you want to be a part of it, but let's hear it from you. What initially attracted you to a project like this? Yes, yes. Well, uh, the first thing I noticed when I read the script was that uh, it was dealing with an issue uh, that has touched the African-American community for my entire life, uh, racism. Uh, but it dealt with it in its complicated condition. And it dealt with it from the perspective of an Asian American community as well, interwoven with the black community. Why? My character, African American police captain, uh, who was the superior officer to Officer Mike Tan, played by Kenny Liu, and the father of Candace Walker, played by Sierra Renee who is Kenny Liu's fiance. So now, now you got one of my employees engaged to my daughter involved in an accidental shooting of a black man. This is a complicated story. So uh, it was fascinating to me and it was a conversation I was willing to have and I thought needed to be started. And uh, I was proud to be a part of it when they asked me to come aboard. That is that is terrific to hear. What what do you say about because this is not the first film that tackles this type of issue because but a lot but it take, takes it in a different aspect because it sees a lot of gray and a lot of other films take it either black or white. Do you, do you think this this film takes it a lot better than what you know saying that it's a much more complicated matter? Yes, I do. I think it achieves that purpose. I think it does uh, enhance the conversation. Uh, the fact is, it is complicated. The fact is that this film being filmed about four years ago was before the public outcry, before these hate crimes against a Asian Americans became so dominant in the news. And, and you could see from the videos how people have been, you know, just hitting people off the street, just cold cocking. It's just a horrible thing. And it's all prejudice. It's all racism and facets of it. So I think this is timely for our film to come out now because the issue is being talked about and addressed. Um, and I think that uh, it is an important issue. And yes, it is shown and it does deal with the complicated nature uh, of this issue in America. Yeah, it, I, I, I was told that it was filmed uh, before everything, but in reality, the relevancy of a film like this, like you said, it's, it's practically all, you know, all of our lives. Yes, yes, yes. Well, racism is something that whether you're talking about it or not talking about it, it's right there, you know. I, as a black man, I, I don't know how many times I've been alone on an elevator and the door opened and two or three white people were standing there and they step back seeing a black man or a white woman is there and she steps back and waits on the next elevator just so she doesn't have to get in there with me. And I know that same thing happens to Asian Americans from time to time. Um, I'm empathetic for anyone who's victimized by prejudice, by racism. Racism is a, a horrible tragedy that has impacted our world. And uh, until we can talk about it, until we can have the conversation, until we can uh, come to some kind of understanding and get rid of the ignorance that racism comes from, I don't think we'll be able to do anything about it. How, how did you feel how this film tackled the issue of racism? I mean, I mean for one thing, a lot of when people think of, you know, police um, shooting between the victims, they think of, you know, black and white. But this, this is a centerpiece around with Asians, which is a, an entirely different perspective. Yeah. 
I think that's fresh. I think it's a fresh idea. I think it's it's refreshing to see somebody else. But even though it's horrible to see it happening to anybody, um, uh, I think it has meaning because uh, it has raised the conversation. And that's all that Amy Long wanted to do. Um, a wonderful writer, you know, first time director, but very patient, um, very understanding, very giving, and willing to collaborate with her actors on how a scene should be played, what should be conveyed. And, uh, and she was very specific I remember the dinner scene. She was very specific about each beat that happened at that dinner table. And, and it was because we wanted to show, uh, I think she wanted to show the importance of respect for elders and respect for authority, uh, respect for one another, respect for human beings, respect across races and respect in general. Uh, and she did so deftly in the scene where we had dinner, which I hope your viewers will be able to understand how important that was. And, and my character, my character, uh, it was easy for me, Clifton, to uh, feel the things that my character felt at that moment sitting around that table because I have such high regard for my Asian American brothers and sisters. <laughs> By the way, I love that dinner scene. So uh, <laughs> it is it is terrific because that that shows how how we could go beyond racism and get together with it. And I, and I'm sure you enjoyed all that Chinese food. That was oh, a, I did. I did. <laughs> as soon as they said cut, I will. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious. It was so good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, one of the things that I remarked uh, with everybody else that I also uh, love because you don't see it in a lot of um, cinema is interracial dating. Um, um, and, um, and, and in this case, uh, we have an Asian person and a black person and, and you don't see that, uh, um, you know, that type of interracial dating at all in, in, in cinema. Could you uh, talk about that because um, you know, it's the main character with the with with the actress who plays uh, your daughter in the film. Yes, Ciara Renee playing Candace Walker with Kenny Lou, and uh, uh, he plays Mike Tan, and they're engaged. My daughter and one of my officers. I'm the police captain, and he's one of my officers dating my daughter, engaged to be married. Oh, that's bringing it close to home. What did I think of it? How did it affect me? I've got to tell you, I've long been a believer that love disregards race. Very often, love disregards, I mean, it's aware of it. it love doesn't look at a black person and think, Oh, I don't see their color. Oh, no, no. You've got to see the color because you've got to see what complications it could cause your life. But when you love someone, you don't care what color they are. And love is a wonderful, wonderful feeling that crosses racial barriers and touches human beings. It's probably the best way we can express our humanity is to love someone else who maybe doesn't look exactly like you. And that, that is a terrific message, Cliff Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the, the main focus of the film is, it's not just about the shooting, but it's basically the aftermath where uh, the office, officer Tan goes through, a, you know, um, how can you say, a mental health um, yeah. issue in, in the case. But for, for yourself, playing DC Walker, who's his superior, also has that situation in hand because you know you have a close relationship with Officer Tan. Could could you get tell us getting into that mindset of his superior? You know, seeing you know how his, um, you know his officer and you know soon to be fiance 
you know, going through these different stages? I believe that my character, uh, Captain Walker, has a, has a good sense of what his boundaries and responsibilities are, both as a commanding officer of a police force and as a father. He knows when to step back away from his daughter and let her have the relationship she wants. But he also knows how to give counsel to his police officer, not just on how to handle situations that arise for uh, law enforcement, but how to treat and respect his daughter and what should and should not be done in order to save oneself. Mm. Excellent. And, and Clifton, how do you choose your projects now these days? I mean, I, this, is a, this is a very good indie project, but I'm, I'm just curious because you have a very long, illustrious um, career, you know, from, from stage to film to some TV and, and stuff. Could you, could you tell what, 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 do you, what basically says, you know what, I want to do something? I try to find a project that has a sound, solid moral compass. Um, what do you mean? That doesn't mean I'm not going to do a project that doesn't have drugs and murder and mayhem going on. Uh, I'm recurring on Godfather of Harlem, happy to do it. Uh, the character I play, however, is not that kind of character. Yes, he has flaws and he has failings. And if I get back on the show this next season, yeah, I'm sure we'll see some of that. But, but I like to see a moral compass that says right wins. Mm. That doesn't always come out that way. Um, even in A Shot Through the Wall, I don't know that it ends up justly but it ends up honestly mm -hmm. and i think truth is important uh in trying to tell a story um so what do i do how do i look for a project i try to find a project with the fewest expletives for me to say <laughs> <laughs> uh, i shoot myself in the foot very often because of it i could have gone a lot further if I'd say and do anything. And there was a time in my career where I would. But after I converted to Christianity, I, I chose to walk a different path. Most excellent. That, that sounds great. Well, let, let me leave with one more thought. Um, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just going to ask a very random question, but, uh, but I was looking... You know, it's 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 long ago, but I was looking through your Wikipedia page that you uh, you wrote a uh, "Never Can't Say Goodbye" for the yes. Jackson Five. Could you could uh, I don't really know the story, but could you tell me the story on um, how you you came up with that iconic song um, long ago? Uh, well, the short version. I um I am the child of a divorced mother and father. And um, when mother left, I stayed with dad. And when I was with dad, I loved my dad, but I missed my mother. And uh, I wanted to go and visit my mother. So my dad would send me to visit my mother. When I left my dad, I would cry because I missed him when I was leaving. I would go stay with my mother for a while. And then I missed my dad and I want to go back. And when she sent me back to my father, I would cry. So I had a really hard time saying goodbye. I just couldn't say goodbye, no matter what my desire was. And then I met a girl who wanted to have me for her boyfriend and somebody else at the same time. And I was having a hard time with that. So I sat down and wrote this song about the synergy of saying goodbye and how difficult it was, especially in the instance of romance. 
and it came to me fairly quickly. And I wrote it out, and uh, then I was able to resolve the issues. And uh, I also got a hit song. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I don't know how, how you, you know, maybe you do realize is how many re reiterations of that song um, through, through the decades. I don't know if you have a favorite of, uh, do, do you have a favorite? It depends on my mood. I, I I recently recorded it. It's on uh, on iTunes right now. Clifton Davis singing "Never Can Say Goodbye," but I have I have several that I think are just wonderful, and um, and of course the Jacksons, and of course Isaac Hayes. Oh my goodness! It sparked a friendship between he and I through the years. Um, and uh, and there are jazz versions that I really love, so uh, I I can't even begin to tell you. There's too many. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I was listening to your version over and over again this morning uh, before oh. the interview. So <laughs> that's that's why I wanted to spark that conversation. Well, thank you very much, Gabe. Well, Clifton, it is a Genuine pleasure to uh, meet you. Thank you very much for speaking to us about a shot through the wall, and um, and and reliving a you know your your hit song. Thank you for very much. My privilege, and thank you for having me, Kate. Hey, thank you. Bye now. Bye bye.